All right, uh, thank you to everyone who's joined today's webinar. We're gonna get started in just a few minutes, so please hang tight. For those of us who have just joined, um, just hang tight. We will be started in a couple of minutes. All right, let's get started. Um, hi everyone, my name is Julio Lopez and I'm the Associate Director of Retail Strategy here at Movable Inc. And today I will be the moderator for our wonderful panelists. Uh, first, I would like to welcome everyone who has dialed into today's webinar and give you a big thank you for joining us. Um, I'll quickly go over some housekeeping items and then we'll get right into today's webinar entitled, How Brands Can Amplify Email Marketing with UGC and Loyalty. So first off, today's webinar is being recorded and it will be sent out to all the registrants over the next 48 hours. Um, and there will be a Q&A section at the end of the webinar. So we encourage all attendees to ask questions within the Q&A tool and we will address them at the end of the discussion. So for today's webinar, we will be reviewing the evolution of email best practices. Also, how brands can activate their most loyal customers um, we'll also look at some early adopters of the topic at hand, that's email, loyalty, and UGC. And we'll also discuss how UGC and email drive loyalty engagement. And as mentioned earlier, we'll wrap it all up with Q&A at the end. All right, so without further ado, let's bring in our panelists for today. Um, today we have Ilana representing CrowdTwist and Max representing Curalate, and I will be representing Movable Inc. Uh, why don't we each introduce ourselves, tell the audience a little bit more about our companies and our roles within those companies so that everybody can get a better idea of why we're experts in our respective fields. Um, Ilana, why don't you get us started? Perfect. Thank you, Julio. I'm Ilana Legekman, and I lead the strategy and planning team at CrowdTwist. CrowdTwist is a leading SaaS-based loyalty technology platform. We power some of the world's most innovative and exciting loyalty programs. Our omni-channel platform enables brands to foster deeper and exciting, deeper relationships with their customers or fans, building emotional loyalty that drives incremental business value. We leverage AI and predictive analytics throughout the platform to deliver personalized, relevant, and customer-centric experiences and empower our brands to activate an action on the first-party data captured across all the touch points we power. Uh, thank you for that intro um, and that overview of CrowdTwist. It's great to have you here, Alana. Uh, Max, why don't we kick it over to you? Sounds good. Uh, hey everyone, I'm Max Yelm and I head up strategic partnerships here at Curalate. For those of you unfamiliar, Curalate is a social commerce platform helping brands and retailers sell more effectively online by solving e-commerce's discovery problem. Today, we work with over 1,100 brands and retailers and have roughly 100 employees across four offices. Um, our platform enables clients to leverage shoppable lifestyle content to drive product discovery, 
inspire consumers, and increase conversions everywhere they engage with their customers across the digital purchasing journey. Uh, thank you, Max. Uh, it's definitely great to have you here. And we're looking forward to hearing more about how the Curate platform has driven value for different brands and retailers. Uh, a little bit about me, as mentioned before, my name is Julio Lopez, and I'm the Associate Director of Client Strategy for Movable Inc., and I focus on the retail vertical. And my role within Movable Inc. is to partner with our key clients to identify and deliver strategy frameworks that drive meaningful results. And then as far as Movable Inc., our technology enables digital marketing leaders to create very unique, relevant, and compelling visual experiences across email, web, and display at the exact moment of engagement. So with Movable Link, digital marketers can free their data from the data silos that they're housed in and activate that data to generate creative with millions of unique variations based on things like consumer context, consumer behavior, and third-party insights. Um, and because this intelligent creative is automatically generated in real time, we are effectively removing the production bottleneck that has historically prevented marketers from generating personalized images at scale. So with that, uh, let's get into the meat of today's discussion. Um, why don't we start off today's webinar by taking a brief look at the evolution of email best practices. So Ilana, why don't we start with you? Um, how have you seen email evolve over the last few years? Yeah, for brands that have been following email best practices, this should be no news. For you, in 2016, we saw the decline of batch and blast email campaigns as customers began unsubscribing and providing clear feedback that they were hearing from brands too often. After that trend, brands began adopting personalization elements into emails and quickly saw higher open click and conversion rates. Fast forward from that trend, and that brings us into the era of dynamically rendered email campaigns. As customers are constantly interacting with brands across all channels, brands need to ensure they are sending personalized, relevant, and timely communications to still achieve higher open click and conversion rates. Yeah, I, I totally understand what you're saying. And I think uh, you've definitely hit the nail on the head in that brand interactions really are cross-channel. And so this need, um, uh, for relevancy and personalization across channel has never been greater. So when I stop and think about a great user experience, I think about how email can fit into this multi-channel strategy um, to create these personalized visual experiences for every single customer, no matter how or where they interact with the brand. So here's just one example of what this could look like. Um, with email, you can send your customers a live poll to find out what types of products they're interested in. So this would be a great tactic for new customers who you don't know much about yet, but you still want to create that personalized experience for them. So then when the customer clicks through on that email and heads over to your website category page, you can show them a header image that is personalized with their name and something based on their poll response. And then you could even go as far as using uh, location targeting by leveraging maybe an API data source to show them localized content that they might be interested in. In this case, we're showing a local trail for somebody who's interested in hiking. Um, and finally, maybe including a live Instagram feed within any of these touch points is a great way to drive authenticity and also inspire new customers. But again, every single customer journey is different. And this is just one example of how innovative digital marketing leaders can use email to create these personalized visual experiences at scale. Um, but the way I see it, most of this content is generated by the brand. So Max, how do you see the individual consumer coming into this flow? That's, that's a great question. And, and really, it's, it's a lot about you know, upgrading your emails with user-generated content. So we think about you know, using UGC to, to kind of up-level your email strategy in, in six pretty straightforward ways, right? So the first one is making sharing straightforward. People tend to follow direction. Right, so if you want your customers to do something, just go ahead and ask them. Um, including strong calls to action and emails for your customers to tag your brand, use your hashtags on social when they share the latest purchase um, is a great way to get them to, to start getting involved in that visual conversation. Next is using social proof to reach your goals. Um, so inspire your customers with engaging lifestyle content featuring your products to drive higher click-through rates and increase revenue from email. Great source of that type of content is, is your fans and followers on social. 
Um, eliminating the grunt work. So creating content in-house can be expensive and time consuming. Your customers are already creating amazing content on social, presenting a great opportunity to repurpose this content into marketing channels like email. Plus, you know, most most companies will actually get permission from from their their customers when they um, before using that content. So when you reach out to ask for permission, it's like giving your customers a virtual high five. Great way to kind of interact with them on a more personal level. Um, next is bring content to life. So lifestyle content on its own lacks product metadata, right? So that basically means we have no idea what's in the picture. Um, at the core of our platform here at Curalate is a media tagging engine that uses a combination of machine learning and human moderation to make it dead simple to tag an image with its products. Once that image is tagged, this content has useful information to empower your customers to find the products that caught their eye in channels like email thus making that traffic to site more impactful and, and kind of more relevant for your consumers. Fifth is curating your feed. So you have data on your content and you should use that to make sure your best performing content is put to work. Um, a, a bonus tidbit is, you know, this gives you, uh, this gives a subtle hint to your customers as to what type of content gets featured. So that helps them sort of elevate their content game, if you will, which ultimately means they're gonna produce more content when they share it to social. Um, that is you know kind of reflective of your brand and and how you want your your products to be featured so great way to kind of improve the quality of content you're you're getting from your customers and then finally keep it on message with a little bit of planning up front it's really easy to make sure relevant content hit your customers inbox every time so leveraging tech partners like Curalate, movable link crowd twist and you know i'm sure there's others out there too but you know leveraging tech partners that that are kind of focused on these sorts of things makes this really easy for you to do yeah, uh, thanks, Max. Uh, that's very insightful. And, you know, I definitely agree. And I think email campaigns particularly can greatly benefit from UGC. You know, at its core, it's providing an upgraded experience that's bringing that voice of the customer into the email. Um, and everything that you listed out on this slide um, are very practical recommendations that I think all of our marketers should definitely keep top of mind. So, so thank you for sharing that. Um, so now that we've got a better understanding around how email has evolved over the last couple of years and also a clearer picture of the strategies that marketers should be implementing when it comes to UGC, I think it's only natural that we want to dive into how brands can activate their most loyal customers. So Max, let's stay with you. Where do you see UGC fitting in with loyalty? Yeah, so we've seen this with every type of brand and every type of activation. Um, some brands run specific campaigns to collect user-generated content and then that leverage that, that content throughout the year. Um, others build strong ongoing relationships with creators and VIP customers to keep a steady stream of high quality content coming in. Um, a, a couple examples I really like, one is Sephora Squad. So they effectively launched an influencer incubation program by inviting some of their best, most loyal customers into the program. It was an awesome, awesome way to celebrate their best customers and create reliably effective content. Um, another great example is, is Fabletics, who's you know, part of Textile, but they build a consistent strategy to ask customers for content everywhere they interacted with them, right? online, offline, after they purchased a product, et cetera. Um, it, it's really a best in class example of making it straightforward for their customers to share content and then celebrate those customers after they did share it while driving real value for the brand. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's great to see those six points um, you laid out earlier come to life in these campaigns. You know, lifestyle content generated by real users is extremely impactful as social proof, as you'd mentioned before. Um, and the way that these brands are leveraging that really is best in class. Um, another example that comes to mind for me, I love how Lush leverages lifestyle content by showcasing a combination of customer Instagram photos, testimonials, and five-star reviews. So this email campaign that you see here is promoting Lush's foot care product, and it automatically is pulling in three customer testimonials and these five-star reviews. And they're also incorporating um, that UGC with lifestyle images from Instagram. Um, and they're also encouraging social sharing with their hashtag um, soulmates. So the result of this campaign, in my opinion, is not only is it a clever use of lifestyle content, but it's incredibly visual, it's on brand, and it drives customer engagement. So Max, of course, you're the expert here, so I'll stay with you on this. 
What are your thoughts on this other example from Full Beauty Brand? Yeah, absolutely. So this one's actually kind of similar to Sephora Squad's campaign that I described earlier, but um, basically, you know, like I mentioned, Sephora Squad launched a campaign to create deeper connections with their customers. Full Beauty Brands launched a similar campaign with one of their brands, Romans. Um, this originated out of a realization that their marketing campaigns were promoting an image that was out of touch with who their core customer was. So they created the hashtag I am Romans campaign to celebrate their customer, create content that resonates more effectively with their audience. Um, this is a really, really good example of what we call social proof, using lifestyle content to inspire your customers and help them envision your products in their own life. Um, and again, bonus points here for actually getting that content from their their fans to to really, you know, present social proof with a layer of authenticity. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great example of social proof and, and it's being leveraged in an amazing way. Um, you know, in my opinion, I think what ties these different campaigns together or these different executions together is how visual the experiences are. So, Ilana, in your view, what actions are brands hoping that loyal customers will take from these visual experiences? And, and of course, Max, feel free to jump in as well. Yeah, I love seeing brands include these visual experiences in the email marketing of their loyalty programs. In doing so, they're truly maximizing the investment they've made in the program by encouraging their best customers to take action. Brands who have successfully incorporated visuals in their email marketing have been able to drive greater program participation and engagement, um, increase sales, and forge deeper, meaningful connections with their customers. Yeah, and it, from our perspective over here at Curalate, you know, one of the things we, we think a lot about is discovery, right? And one of the great joys of shopping is stumbling, stumbling across a great find, right? Inspiring consumers is core to the shopping experience. And offline, brands and retailers have been doing this for decades. But online, it's actually a little bit harder to kind of stumble upon a new product or discover something naturally. Um, brands are focused on solving this issue, but the tools they have don't always fit. Reviews help you determine if a product you're actively considering is right for you, and recommendations attempt to surface products that you might enjoy, but often do so in, in a little bit of a restrictive way that kind of presents you with more of the same product you're already looking at. In short, it doesn't do a ton for discovery. Um, at, at Curalate, you know, again, we're all about making lifestyle content shoppable and fostering that sense of discovery. So true inspiration encourages someone to lean back and browse. Um, we feel that UGC is a core piece of that and building a strategy around it can drive multiple benefits, including growing your community, inspiring customers, demonstrating social proof, and of course, increasing conversions. Yeah, I absolutely agree um, that UGC is definitely addressing that core sort of missing piece in that digital shopping experience, which is that discovery element that we can have in the, in the retail, in the physical retail space. Um, Ilana, with your strong background in loyalty, have you seen examples of where this has come to life, the, the joining of UGC and how it can drive discovery and also loyalty? I know that's a bit of a loaded question there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm really excited to share this example. Uh, one of our retail clients, Sleep Number, um, they recently drove loyalty through one of their core partnerships. Um, they partner with the NFL and they really took advantage of this partnership to create an exciting campaign. So through surveys that they deployed through their loyalty dashboard, they found that a lot of their inner circle members were also big NFL fans. Through this partnership, they solidified their leadership in the sleep space. They are a thought leader constantly putting out content and surfacing it through their loyalty pro program. They were also really able to tie in and convey how sleep impacts performance in a compelling way. They set out to increase awareness of the sleep IQ technology in their product extend the NFL partnership benefits to their best customers and amplify how their brand their brand to the most popular sport in the US. Um, so loyalty members were surveyed and segmented based on their level of interest in the NFL. Fans of the NFL were extended value from the partnership with access to NFL related content, events, and even a sweepstakes to go to the Super Bowl. From past data, uh, we knew that lots of inner circle loyalty members had pets at home. So wanted to share a really cute example. Um, they wanted to tie everything they've done in the past. They've previously surveyed their members about whether or not they let their dog sleep in their bed. So this is a great tie-in um, to ask their members to share 
and submit pictures of their pets in their favorite NFL attire. And as an extra bonus, they earn loyalty points for doing so. That's a great campaign. You know that animals are always going to do well <laughs> when you're showing those <laughs> cute images. Um, but overall, I do love seeing how um, all of this is coming to life. And I think we're definitely conveying to our audience how UGC and loyalty come together. You know, and as we think through these examples, I'm sure that some of our listeners may be worrying about the level of effort that this might entail. Something that we hear a lot from um, our marketers and the marketers and the people that we work with is this challenge of a content bottleneck. Um, so companies often have these large amounts of content and data, but the problem is that it's scattered across countless different sources. You've got your website, your blog, CSV files, social channels, CRM, third-party websites, and on and on and on. So without the right tools, it's nearly impossible to leverage all of that data and then use it to power your, um, your emails to create these visual experiences that we're talking about. So to break those bottlenecks, I think there's three things that marketers need. Uh, one, it's the ability to easily pull data from each of the sources they have access, access to, um, the ability to repurpose and reformat data into email to create the best possible customer experience, and then also understand and optimize the best content sources. So three very important fa facets to, to make this happen. Um, and these are the types of challenges that Movable Link helps our clients solve every day. And we work with partners like CrowdTwist and Curlate, not only through integration, but also through joint strategy setting to help marketers solve that content bottleneck. And so to bring it full circle with today's topic, leveraging UGC and loyalty is one of the ways we can overcome the content challenge. So by pulling in this relevant content directly from the, from the platforms, we can create these experiences at scale. Um, yeah, any thoughts, Alana? Yeah, I mean, this has been a great learning. This has been great. Um, I'm excited to learn about all these great experiences that brands are creating and how they're activating their most loyal customers through email, UGC, through their loyalty programs. So excited to take a deeper look into some early adopters. And I know we have some really exciting examples to share. Um, Max, we were chatting earlier about the parachute home example. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so parachute home sources a ton of high quality user generated content by encouraging their most loyal customers to share content with the hashtag my parachute home this content is then featured prominently on their website to drive inspiration provide use cases for their product and ultimately increase conversions i mean the, the content you're seeing on the the screen is great and you know looking at pillowcases sheets and comforters on sort of a white background on a product shot that you're accustomed to seeing on product pages is helpful to understand what the product is, but really seeing it, you know, in a beautifully designed bedroom or bathroom or whatever it is, um, it kind of does something else for the, the consumer. So after seeing the value of what this content was doing on their website, they turned to one of the most valuable offsite acquisition channels, email, right? And by featuring customer content email, they're able to drive or rather for, further foster product discovery in the inbox, celebrate their customers, and again, drive more engaged traffic to their website. Yeah, so I'm going to throw a question uh, to both you guys. Um, why do you think retail um, has been an early adopter behind the use of UGC and email and loyalty programs? Yeah, I, I can take a stab at that. Um, so, yeah, we know that the retail industry is incredibly visual. Um, and it's no secret that visuals are powerful for driving customer engagement. And I think the reason for that, uh, that the, the reason why the retail industry is incredi incredibly visual is that whether you're selling apparel or automobiles or beauty products or anything, you're selling an identity. It's an aspiration of who the customer wants to be. And the only way to convey such a complex message is through visuals. I think we've, we know we're all familiar with that phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words. And I think this is especially true when the visuals are relevant to the customer's needs. So when you add UGC, which is both highly visual and relevant, to these loyalty campaigns, I think we can expect to see a huge jump in engagement, especially from the most loyal customers. It could not agree more. And you know, we think about it as selling a lifestyle, right? And and again, Julio, to just to kind of reiterate what you said, whether it's a fashion or apparel brand, a, you know, home goods, beauty, what have you, you know, you're you're 
people love showing off their latest outfit if they look you know awesome on a weekend the, the new room in their house they they sort of designed right um, and that content resonates really well but specifically related to beauty brands because we've been talking a lot about home and, and apparel um, UGC can can play a really pla- practical role as as much as it plays a brand related or a competitive role right beauty products often look different on different skin tones and given the number of variations there g- getting the right number of models for editorial and product shots can be not only difficult but pretty darn expensive too right so going back to your customers and and sourcing and leveraging UGC really helps to fit that gap naturally. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And we've had quite a few clients who've leveraged UGC to create some really exciting point earning opportunities within their loyalty programs. So I wanted to just share a couple. And what's exciting here is to see they're from a variety of industries. They have very, very different target consumers and end users, but they're all leveraging UGC effectively. Um, One that was really fun, um, The Walking Dead. Um, So we power their fan rewards club. um, And they wanted to use this really activated fan base to bring together this passionate community and harness their enthusiasm. So they ran a fan art contest. Fans were awarded points for participating and could then vote on their favorite submission. It was a great way to celebrate and show appreciation to fans for their passion and creativity. Points in the program can be redeemed for exclusive once-in-a-lifetime experiences like being flown to the set and being made over as a walker and even starring as an extra on the show. So those points definitely can take you <laughs> far. Um, another um, really fun brand for us is Zoomies. Um, they activate a really key gem- demographic, uh, the Gen Z high schooler, with really fun frequent contests run through their loyalty program, The Stash. They're encouraging video, testimonials, photo submissions that lead to some mind-blowing prizes. Um, And finally, to touch on Tarte, um, they are winning the game when it comes to social media engagement. They have an avid following and love to feature Tartlets who love the brand and all the products. Tartlets are encouraged to upload UGC, and then if their photo makes the Tarte social gallery, they get even more points. A great way to appreciate your biggest advocates and gather amazing content. Let me tell you, as a huge Walking Dead fan, I can definitely relate to how impactful this can be. So thank you for sharing that example. Um, But overall, I love how all of this is coming together. Um, So here's an idea. Why don't we dig deeper around a theme of how UGC and email can help drive loyalty engagement? So Max, why don't you tell us your thoughts on that? Totally, It's, it's all about engagement, right? Building browse based shopping, delivers a better, more inspirational experience for consumers at, at risk of sounding like a broken record. But you know, it, it also provides benefits to brands. The, the more products a customer views, the more time they spend on site, the more that brand can learn about who their customers are, what products resonate, and how they could adjust marketing to meet them. Um, again, we talked earlier about lifestyle content providing social proof, but it, it really does a lot to both demonstrate use cases for a product and help consumers visualize that product in their own life. Um, featuring this content gives people kind of like a pathway to being celebrated by their favorite brands. Um, so combining that with loyalty programs, I think is a really awesome way to engage customers, um, kind of tie back into some of those loyalty kind of programs that uh, a lot of mentioned earlier, um, but also to generate more, more content, right? And, and together these things give people confidence to buy. That's social proof, demonstrating use cases. And, and again, we see this driving significant increases in conversion rates on site when customers engage with lifestyle content. So building programs around the opportunity to generate more of them is a great way to kind of tie loyalty back into your content strategy. Um, a question for you guys. I mean, how, how does the use of creative technologies cre- create a competitive advantage for retailers looking to stand out from the pack? Yeah, uh, that's a great question, uh, Max. I think the thing that retailers need to keep in mind is that customers are inundated with marketing messages every single day from countless brands. So only the most remarkable, the most relevant, and the most visually compelling campaigns are going to be the ones that get noticed. Um, You know, one of the newer and more creative ways that we're seeing marketers drive engagement in their loyalty programs is with augmented reality experiences. So you can use AR to encourage your loyalty members to use their points and move on to, or or earn points to move on to the next loyalty tier. 
So for example, you could have an AR filter for each of your loyalty tiers, bronze, silver, gold, et cetera. And then once a customer reaches a new tier, then you can send them an email with the relevant AR filter that surprises and delights them. But then don't stop there. Since we're talking about UGC, then the brands can make sure that these AR experiences are then shareable on social and encourage that sharing with maybe a branded hashtag. And that way we can bring in more customers into the fold. Yeah, um, that's exciting. I can't wait to see one of our clients take that <laughs> AR idea. Um, so wanted to um, highlight philosophy, one of our shared clients. Um, they run the Philosophers Rewards Program, um, and they're capturing a ton of really great data on their customers, and they send highly personalized loyalty emails, including welcome emails, tier-level uh, tier up notifications, and uh, what we're looking at here, their monthly loyalty recap. Um, all the data CrowdTwist stores on the rewards member is fed to Movable Inc. to create one-to-one -one personalized email communications. Not only do we remind members of their tier status and points balance, but also all the points that they were able to redeem that month and maybe some of their top activities completed. It's a really great way to solidify that they're getting value from the loyalty program and then get and acknowledge their status and their commitment to the brand. And I'll share just one more here. Uh, Budweiser. Um, so Budweiser Rewards um, has been a key strategy for Bud to connect with their customers. Members engage with Bud content and earn points for purchasing Bud when they upload their receipt. And then these points translate into some really cool prizes. In partnership with Movable Inc. and CrowdTwist, Budweiser sends highly personalized email that pull in real-time points and redeemable rewards. This reinforces the value a member is getting from the loyalty program drives redemption, and ultimately higher customer lifetime value. It's great that here they can pull in my actual point balance and then show me the rewards that I'm ready to redeem rather than rewards that are far outside my reach, making it feel like I'm really able to get immediate gratification from the program. Yeah, thanks, Lana. I, and I think the key word there is, you know, it's a highly personalized experience for that individual pulling in that loyalty data. Um, and overall, these are really great examples um, from Philosophy and Budweiser. So thank you for sharing that. Um, so looks like we're coming up on time for our, our, for our originally planned content. Um, so Max, Alana, thank you so, so much for all your insights. Um, I think if I were to summarize your amazing content from today, I would say that the key takeaways we've covered are three. Uh, one, dynamic data-driven visuals can connect you with customers and streamline production. Also, it's important that we all keep in mind that highly personalized emails can create and elevate these one-to-one -one customer relationships. And then lastly, that the combination of loyalty and UGC can be a compelling set of levers that motivate customers to take the actions that we're looking for, like making a purchase, redeeming for rewards, writing reviews, or referring friends. So again, thank you both for your time today. Um, I'm sure that the audience has questions. We have our moderators kind of looking at us and, and uh, uh, about to feed us some. Um, let's see what we've got coming in. Yeah. Should we give them a minute? Yeah, I think that works. Actually, there, there's one here I, I really like that I can go ahead and take. Um, so the, the question is, this all sounds great, but how do I actually get started, right? We're, we're getting some UGC on social, we're sending emails, we have a loyalty program, but how do we actually tie all these things together? It's a great question. Um, and, you know, from my perspective here at Curalate, I can speak to our partnerships with Movable Link and CrowdTwist to share a little bit, you know, a bit of a peek behind the curtain in terms of how we can kind of tie these programs in with your broader UGC strategy. So um, specifically to our, our partnership with CrowdTwist, we have an API integration that allows us to pass information over to CrowdTwist once a mutual client approves UGC to, for example, their website galleries. This allows the brand to give credit or award points back to their customers and their CrowdTwist loyalty program. Um, so by making UGC a stated part of their loyalty program, we see brands actually generating more high quality content to impact their KPIs. So awesome, awesome way to kind of reach out to your most loyal audience to um, you know generate more of that content that we know drives results on the other side with movable inc we have an api integration that enables content to be pulled into email based on a couple things like recency or performance 
Um, and generally, we'll see that kind of you know content kind of flow into to marketing campaigns, weekly newsletters, stuff like that. But our partnership also allows for clients to feature content tagged with specific products and triggered emails. So think things like abandoned cart or post purchase. And unsurprisingly, when lifestyle content is featured in email, it drives more clicks and and leads to more revenue. So just a little bit kind of high level on on how we partner with CrowdTwist and Movable Inc. And a couple ways that. If you're interested in leveraging UGC loyalty and email together, um, there's some pretty, you know, awesome and creative ways you can start to to build campaigns around all of this. Very cool. Uh, I think that was a pretty detailed response. Yeah. So thank you. That was perfect. <laughs> uh, let's see. Turning around the computer so I can see the the next question. Uh, okay. Uh, this one's for me, I guess. Uh, how can we be sure that the strategies we want to test are the right ones? Um, if you've ever heard me on a webinar before, I probably try to give this advice in one way or another, so this is an easy one for me. Um, I think to, to, to make sure that the strategies that you're, you're taking on are the right ones, um, there's two things that really need to be done. Uh, one is you should benchmark yourself against your industry to see what the best in class are doing, or maybe an aspirational brand that you uh, benchmark against, um, and see where you fall short and try to not just catch up with them, but outdo them. Um, and the way that you figure out what those strategies might be, I think is by working very closely with your tech partners. Um, any tech partner that you work with should be coming to you regularly with ideas and strategies. And I think it's on the brands and retailers to, to, to listen to this partner. Um, you know, this, a true partner is gonna brainstorm with you, they're gonna iterate with you, um, and it's important that the brands keep in mind that that tech vendor is gonna be more in tune with what's going on in the market than they might be, uh, the, the individual retailer or brand might be, because they're working with hundreds of companies, and so that's gonna allow them to see what's really moving the needle, what's working um, and what's not working. So. The TLDR on that, I think, would be that you need to rely on those strategic partnerships, and that's how you'll know that the strategies that you're trying to go to market with are the right ones. That was perfect. That was thorough. <laughs> <Great>. So, <laughs> um, I saw a couple more come in, so I'll take the next one. Um, what what uh, what can you tell about loyalty members based on their willingness to share UGC? Yeah, I mean, we always want to kind of take the data that we're capturing within our loyalty program to be really smart, predictive, and relevant with what we're offering the members. Um, we see across our clients that members who are socially connected spend more and transact more frequently. Um, finding new channels to celebrate your customers and let your customers feel a part of the brand contributes to building emotional loyalty. These members have a deeper loyalty to the brand, and we want to recognize these actions while also predicting which other members are likely also to engage in UGC activity, since we've seen the, uh, the value that this drives. Um, the type of UGC they share and behavior pre and post sharing is also very telling. Uh, we'll look to see what actions build up to the engagement, and then how do we support and foster a willingness to keep sharing um, and keep engaging with that content. So really being mindful and almost prescriptive sometimes um, with the way that behavior is that you're, um, you're displaying within the program as a member um, can drive meaning for the brand and business intelligence really across touch points, whether it's email or the UGC strategy. That's, that's a great one. Um, I'm seeing another one that's come through here. Uh, what happens if you aren't even at the place yet where we have a loyalty program? What are the first steps there? Um, one, remember that you're not alone. <laughs> There's a lot of companies out there that have not started with loyalty programs. Perhaps they didn't think it made sense for them at the time, and now they're realizing their value. Um, and then telling you from personal experience, there's also a lot of brands that are revamping their loyalty programs. So I think most um, brands that I've come across are in one way or another kind of starting from scratch. So so definitely a lot of opportunity to make sure that to, to build a best in class loyalty program. So what I would say is if you're either revamping your loyalty program or if you're starting one from scratch, there are definitely partners out there whose sole focus is on that, re on that strategy. But you may be able to um, tap into your existing uh, tech vendors who work with loyalty 
to give you some of the best in class strategies that combine email and loyalty. So, you know, I know I work with a lot of loyalty uh, programs. I know that CrowdTwist obviously works with a lot of uh, loyalty programs, so that might be a place to get started to get more information. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and really just to um, add on to that, um, we are really mindful to the way that we work with our partners and we work with clients um, who are, have really, really small teams or maybe no team and they need to build out that team as they embark on the loyalty journey to other clients who are ready, they're committed, and they have a few full-time um, staff members within marketing who are already focused on loyalty. But we really, so I lead the strategy team at CrowdTwist, and we really work with you every step of the way to guide you through that process and think about all of those ways that your members might engage with your brand, whether it is subscribing to email or um, uploading UGC, and how we want to award for those actions to then create a loyalty program that is right for your customer as well as your brand. Yeah, and I think that harkens back to what we were talking about earlier, that if you trust, if you work closely with a partner from a strategy perspective and listen to them, you know, they'll, they'll know what's going on, right? So they can point you in the, in the right direction as far as, um, you know, how, what are the next steps and how to move forward to, to making sure that you avoid some of the more common pitfalls that, that other, <laughs> other people have fallen into. Yeah, um, I guess, Max, do you have any, um, if someone's just getting started with UGC, how does Curalate help them out? Yeah, totally. So, I mean, you know, the first thing is about sourcing and organizing your content and, and making it really easy to get it into one place. Um, the, the, the second is really comparing it to your brand, you know, kind of guidelines and how you're communicating visually. User generated content, and I think this actually speaks really well back to the full beauty brand um, uh, example we talked about earlier. But, you know, I, I think kind of understanding how your core customer kind of uses your product is a great way to to kind of give you some insights into into how you should consider marketing your brand right um but then kind of once you start to get some and start to leverage it in more places and see the value of it really thinking through you know creative but always on ways to ask for more whether that's through loyalty programs whether that's reminding people in email shout outs on your website and post purchase communication stuff like that um, but kind of once you get started and seeing the value of how this performs for your brand and understanding kind of where it works best for you, there's a lot you can do, um, you know, with with Curalite's platform to to kind of um, really build out a robust user generated content strategy. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, sorry, just read. There's quite a few coming in, so we're just skimming through them. Um, yeah, I see one here. Uh, try to phrase this the right way. Um, how how do we ensure that the content is appropriate if pulling in in real time? Um, so I think there's two different uh, ways that we can take that question. As far as it, if it's um, appropriate, uh, like uh, accurate. Um, it, it, this is all usually done via APIs, and so we know that if it's loyalty point balance or um, any rewards that are available or anything like that, um, we have very stable API connections, especially with a CrowdTwist. Um, so all the data will be relevant at the moment that it's uh, rendered. Um, if it's a question more around UGC and the appropriateness of that content being pulled in, obviously Curalate will make sure that everything's tagged properly, and, and Max, you can jump in here. Um, yeah. But the images that get pulled in, I'm sure, are relevant to the email. Yeah, so I mean, put it this way, right? Like Alana and Julio may t might take awesome pictures and share them on Instagram, and they have great content, and you know, I, I might not take great photos, right? So if if you're a brand that all three of us have created content for, therefore generating user, you know, user generated content, you might not want to use my photos, but you might want to use Julio and Alana's, right? What's, what's great is when we pull that content in, ultimately brands have the final say on what content gets approved to go places. We're not just like flooding marketing channels with user generated content, right? So um, there's, there's a few ways that happens. One is through AI or computer vision technology to kind of surface content that's more representative of your best performing content already. Um, the other way is through human moderation, right? Just having the, the final say before content gets pushed to your website or into social channels or what have you, but it's ultimately the content that you've explicitly approved into your marketing channels that will flow through our APIs um, to go to, you know, movable link, for example. So, 
yeah, you, yeah. you have control over that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very important. Um, so a question came in on how can I manage loyalty programs for different audiences? Um, so I'll kind of answer this a little more broadly. And then um, whoever asked this, if you want to follow up specifically for your use case, absolutely happy to have a more detailed conversation. But just more broadly, as we think about different audiences within loyalty programs. So we will, um, it's really powerful to segment your experiences and deliver a personalized experience. So if I know, let's say you're in the Budweiser program and you live in New York and you absolutely love the Jets and you hate the Giants, I don't want to show you a ton of Giants content. I want you to be excited that my brand is supporting the sports team that you love. So I want to make sure that I'm showing that content to you. Um, for some of our clients that have that are retailers and they have e-commerce, um, I might have an audience that is very promotional and they're very much influenced by sales and discount offers and that's why they buy. So I'll keep um, keep that as a component of their loyalty program. But for those that tend to shop full price that are more excited about being able to redeem for exclusive experiences within the brand, um, then those maybe we don't show them the discount offers. We'll only show them that sweepstakes or that ability to redeem points to go to the World Series. And that's really what we'll want to emphasize to make sure that the data that you're giving us within the loyalty program is then reciprocated in a personalized and relevant way. And this definitely extends into email and the emails that you'll be getting um, rendered with Movable Inc. pull in that loyalty data to make sure that the communication to you, not only on the website and where you're interacting with the loyalty program is personal, but starts to be personal within the email communication that you get as well. So it all ties through to a really seamless omni-channel experience for your members. Cool, all right. So I think there may be one or two other questions, but we are gonna uh, follow up on those via email um, because we are coming up on time. Um, and again, if there's anything else uh, that you want to reach out to any of us for, please feel free to do so. Um, so with that, we've come to the end of today's webinar on how brands can amplify email marketing with UGC and loyalty. So a big thank you to our panelists, Alana from CrowdTwist, Max from Curulate, and of course, a big thank you to all of you who attended uh, today's webinar. Again, this recording will be made available within 48 hours to all registrants, so please keep an eye out for that email um, and share it with anybody else you think might find it interesting. Uh, thank you again, and hope you'll have a great rest of your day.